Hi, Beth Graham here again to give you part two of Advent Conspiracy Give More. And if you'll remember yesterday, we talked about giving more means giving more presence, more of your time of beauty and of presence. And in doing this, we're like Jesus. We're becoming more like him as he gave to us. And then we receive that blessing that comes because it's more blessed to give than receive. And so today I wanted to talk a little bit more practically about what that could look like, what that giving of ourselves could look like. And I wanted to start with the example of Jesus because of course he is the example of giving, isn't he? I'm gonna talk about three ways in which he gave. And the first one is that he gave time. Think about all the people he gave time to. He gave time to the crowds. He gave so much time to the crowds, ministering to them, teaching them, healing them. And then he gave time to his disciples, the wider group of disciples, the 70 that he sent out and he taught them how to go out and minister in his name. And then of course he spent even more time with his disciples, his, his apostles, those 12 that were close to him. And he spent time with them and then he even spent time with the two, John and Peter, who were his inner circle. And above all, he spent time with his father. He loved to retreat and have time with him. He gave time, a lot of time, to others. He also gave in a way that was inconvenient. He was not uh, unwilling to be interrupted for others. And I love, I love the, uh, the story of him you know, retreating. He crosses the lake in order to spend some time alone. And the people find out that he's gone and, so, and where he went. And so they start running around the lake to find him. And so they run around the lake and they catch him. And when they get to, them, get to him, he doesn't say, oh, you know, I'm busy. I'm having my quiet time. I, I can't spend time with you. No, he says, he says, yes, I'll be with you. He has compassion on them. He's willing to be interrupted. For others. He's willing to take that time and be interrupted. And the third way in which he gave, of course, is sacrificially. He gave of himself in such a way that it truly cost. It hurt. And he gave so much that he gave his very life for us so that we could be made new. And you may be thinking right now, Beth, it's a bit of a stretch to compare, you know, my little coffee at Starbucks with somebody to Jesus and his sacrifice for us. And, and perhaps, perhaps so, but I think there's a principle here for us to realize. And the realization is that this, this idea in Advent Conspiracy of giving more presence is going to cost. It takes a little more effort and a little more time and interruption for us to give more in this way. It is much easier and it's very easy for me to fall into the, the trap of just clicking off things on Amazon.com and just bing, 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 get them all shop, you know, wrapped and shipped to the place. No problem. It's very, very easy to do. And it doesn't cost me much of, all, of anything. Giving more, as we're being challenged by Evan Conspiracy to do, giving more presence costs. It takes time, it's sacrificial, it's inconvenient. And so I wanna look at what that might look like practically. And so I thought about taking those same three areas and saying, what, what could that look like for us? And the first one is giving more time. How could we give more time? And we've already mentioned several times, you know, taking someone for lunch, spending time with them. You could go to a museum together. You could take a hike together, go to a show. Anything that just takes time. Because for so many people, that quality time together is what speaks love to them. And so this is a way that we can give more this season is giving time that way. I started thinking about giving inconveniently. What would be a way that we could be inconvenienced to give? And all I could think of was a young mom and thinking what a gift it would be to a young mom to say, I will watch your children for the afternoon so that you can go shop or that you can go, um, you know, have a little time to yourself. I will watch your kids for you. Now that is inconvenient to do that, but what a gift, what a gift that would be to a young mom in your life. Or maybe there's a relative who lives a little bit far away, you don't usually see them. But to say, we're gonna make the trip, we're gonna drive there, we're gonna bring a meal, we're gonna share time with them. That would be inconvenient, but that would show love. That would be an example of giving more. And then finally, the idea of giving sacrificially. What, what would cost us? And, and of course, the time and the inconvenience is a cost as well. But even sometimes financially, it costs to give well. And this may seem a bit of a contradiction to the spending less, but uh, I think there's times to be a careful spender and there's time to be generous. And it's not generous on the bigger, better sweater or, or expensive trinket that we're going to be giving somebody, but spending more in a way that will really bless them. And so sometimes there's a time for us to be generous and not always be thinking of the cost, 
but just to give sacrificially, to give in such a way that we feel it, but really blesses others. There's a scripture I want us to consider, and it's from uh, the situation that was happening back in the time of King David and the people of Israel, and they were collecting money in order to uh, build the temple. And the people ended up giving so generously that I think David was even surprised at how generous they were. And this is what he says. This is 1 Chronicles 29, 14. And he says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. And I think he makes an important point here, that everything we have, whether it's our money, our time, our schedule, all of that is God's. It's all God's. We're only giving of what he's already given to us. And in the same way, those people that are in our life that we are wanting to love and bless through giving of our presence, they are all gifts from God too. They're from him. They're they're made in his image. They're precious to him. They are his, his children. And so when we give of ourselves to them, we are, we are blessing God and we're receiving that blessing, realizing how precious the people are in our life. How can we not give of our presence and of ourself to them? And so I want to urge you and encourage you today as we think about giving more, to give more presence, more of yourself, more of time and of beauty and of presence to those people in your life who whom you love, whom you know, who are a precious gift of God to you. In Jesus' name, amen.